this is a week where we have a bunch of mini adventures and a lot of energetic openings coming to us in a variety of different ways. This is also the time this week where you may be feeling like you are assessing or testing the longevity and commitment and strength of some of your relationships. But I'll say this week also promises to really allow you to keep gleaning more clarity as you build forward towards what it is you desire. Hey everyone, it's Christine. Welcome back to this week's weekly energy forecast for the week of May 13th to the 19th. I feel like the air is changing. We are starting to shift into a lot of different types of energies and you may be feeling them. Comment down below one emoji or a word or anything. What have you been feeling? Have you felt that sudden shift? Do you feel like things are settling down more? I can tell you, I feel like I'm able to simply luxuriate in my words. I'm able to slow down. I feel like I am slower. <laughs> so that has really been felt. On a personal note, I also wanted to say, and this was something that just came to me very quickly, if you feel like you haven't made progress on your goals in your life, like they've changed a million times, or you're just now setting something up and you feel behind, you're not alone. I feel like the start of this year, and even the months preceding that, simply because of this particular eclipse season, there were just a lot of things we thought we wanted to do or things we wanted to put our time and energy into that either dissolved, didn't pan out, didn't work out, or they fell apart, or we simply didn't want to do them anymore. And I feel like it was all allowing us to really lean into some of the more flexible, mutable, double-bodied energies present, but also realize that sometimes the things that we thought was going to occur or we thought was going to pan out in a certain way, it did it. And we don't see why or understand, usually until much later. So a lot of topsy-turvy energy and it necessitated a, a crap load of internal growth and also externally. So just remember, it's okay if your goals are different. Many times it's better to realize that now and simply say, well, I'm going to start where I am now. I felt like the energy that there was just a big delay from around December until recently. And even I'll say until, yeah, until about the 13th right now, when the post Mercury retrograde shadow period ended, because there's just been a lot of things up in the air. So this is a great season, just a reminder to really tap into just feeling what's coming up for you, to be more mindful, to not allow your energy to siphon out fast and to guard that and protect it and to really take care of you and to find that safety within yourself and your own environment. Okie dokie. Happy birthday to all my Taurians. This is the last week of Taurus season. I feel like it came up faster than the other preceding seasons. What did you all think? <laughs> Let's get into the astrology. Reminder, all times in Eastern Standard Time, New York City time for reference. This is a very busy week, post new moon. I felt like the new moon was a lull, almost before taking a nap. And now the universe is like, okay, we're gonna just unveil it all. And I feel like this is the most Taurian week of the season, most notably it's last. Venus in Taurus and Taurus in general, they're going out with a bang. On May 13th, the sun is conjunct Uranus, both in Taurus. So we have a new synodic cycle between these two and it's a powerful awakening, a time I should say, a time for powerful awakenings and bold changes that are happening, either that we make or that are made for us. But I feel like a lot of insights, revelations, awakenings and directions are being made for us or unveiling themselves to us so that we can see other opportunities, other perspectives that we didn't see before. Because it's really easy when we continue, you know, with life and adulting and navigating through all of that, that we may rely on things that we've done before or simply things that we generally go towards. So this Iranian energy is, I feel like a, a, like a shake up, a joke. Like, hey, I know you always get your hair cut in this way, but what about this way? <laughs> you know, it's allowing us to see something vastly different and say, why not? Why not do this? So you may feel this wake up call energy in your body, in your soul essence, 
You may feel jolted. Sometimes we feel this physically through anxiety, nervousness, restlessness, uh, electrical or electricity type feeling. And it's also a time to break rules, maybe your own, or even familial, cultural, systemic, institutional rules, and carve out your own path here of individuation, particularly with the sun conjunct Uranus, because it, sun speaks to your soul, soul essence, expression, clarity. Uranus, like I've already mentioned, breakthroughs. It could be a revelation of sorts, progress, a sudden epiphany. And so I feel like at the start of this week, you may be feeling revved up, particularly with the new moon, and you're like, yes, I'm going down my own path. I'm going to do this, even if other people don't support me or agree with me. And you may also be feeling that innate need on a very deep soul level where you're like, I can't ignore what is calling to me anymore. I can't ignore who I am anymore because there's a drive towards freedom, self-expression, really embracing your individuality and what that means to you. It's kind of like when you go to a store and they give you a blank piece of paper and they tell you you're going to create your own wrapping paper. There could be some people that say, I want to see previous models and they copy that. But the Uranian energy is saying, no, create your own. What is coming to you? What do you want this wrapping paper to look like? In other words, what is coming up for you and what does this version of you want and desire? Because you can change your life, but you first have to figure out if it's something meaningful to you, if this is what you want to do. Because the Uranian energy, yeah, you can be rebellious and do things just for the sake of breaking the rules. But does it have some type of meaning or purpose connected to you? Is it something that's going to help you or support you down the path you're going? On May 13th as well, we have Venus and Taurus forming a sextile to Saturn and Pisces. So Venus is indulging in her co-home of Taurus, the other being Libra, and she's exalted in Pisces here. So there's reception as well. And I feel like it's time to get your earthy and watery Venusian elements grounded into reality here. So you may be feeling again, <clears throat> excuse me, with my reference to relationships. This is like a time ticking or a reassessment where you are thinking about your support system, love, relationships in general, the longevity of them, the endurance and the commitment and asking yourself, which relationships are going to stand the test of time for me? Romance, love, platonic, and also themes around self-love, pleasure, joy, beauty, and in particular female relationships. But maybe looking to see who has your back and will offer support during this journey of rebuilding will come up for you. Because you may notice in all of our paths, which seemingly coincide, it's like a quilt because one decision we make can affect others and we don't know that. And it all happens in very synchronistic, otherworldly ways. And you may realize where you are right now, where you want to go, it really doesn't connect to that old version of you. And likewise to the relationships you once held and also the ways that you loved and took care of yourself, things that you found joy in. As you grow and mature, everything changes. So I feel like relationships here this week, you may realize that some of them have expired. Or you may say, you know what, I want to go deeper in that relationship. Let me communicate and talk and express myself. Because again, with this alignment, there's support here with Venus in a harmonizing sextile here with Saturn and Pisces. So I feel like communication is going to be key. If you are wanting to let people know, hey, I would love to grow our relationship in some way. And I'm saying any type of relationship. And see... What happens from there on may 15th mercury enters taurus so mercury has no dignity or debility here but he's slowing down big time because he just left aries and you may be feeling it particularly i would say it may not be as abrupt because mercury was in retrograde and we just on the 13th today we're coming out of its shadow period finally completely and then it's entering Taurus. So the energy may not be as stark. You may not realize it as quickly. But remember, Taurus is an earth fixed or solid sign. So I feel like Mercury here may be 
it may function a little bit differently because Mercury rules over the double body signs, Virgo and Gemini, and there's an inherent duality or changing landscapes that's present. And with Taurus, it's something that's more enduring and more fixed or solid. And Mercury tends to be, think of Hermes, the messenger of the gods in Greek mythology, tends to be someone with his little, what is it, his little winged sandals. He likes to flutter and fly around like a bumblebee and explore, play tricks, have fun, also pass along messages and travel long distances to get these messages to folks and meander throughout the celestial realm, earth, and the underworld. So just think of them like that. And in Taurus, it's more like, nope, we're going to be on earth for a while. So Hermes <laughs> or Mercury may be a little bit slow, kind of like waking up from a slumber and saying, we're doing this again. <laughs> so it's he's more grounded, more practical, more, I would say, realistic in the Orion energy here. I would say cautious too. You may find yourself making decisions at a slower pace, excuse me, or thinking things through at a much slower level. Like you want to process and feel into them and even telling people, wait, let me think of this. So just caution on any communications you have, travel, things could be slower. You may feel impatient, especially if the Taurian energy is something that is not you're not used to it, I should say. And I feel like there's a lot of thinking about Venusian and moon related themes here. So you may be thinking a lot, how am I going to change my home? Do I need new pillows? You know, I want to sleep better. How can I better support my systems and routines around self-care? How can I change up my style or appearance? There may be a lot of thoughts related, relating to safety, security, but generally finances, home, beauty, love, and relationships, which is another theme here. So the, the point is to allow yourself to simply go with what is coming up, to give yourself a little extra space with Mercury and Taurus, and to realize, because sometimes if you are on the receiving end where people are talking to you, they may be like, yes, I need to get a, uh, they spend like a minute with the uh, and you're like, oh my gosh, hurry the hell up. There could be some impatience here. <laughs> also some resistance too, where you may find people not being ready or able to make decisions or communicate with you or they may take longer to get back and it could be a result of these energies on may 17th mercury in taurus squares pluto which is currently in retrograde in the sign of aquarius so pluto forms a superior square here to mercury and i feel like we may be feeling a bit challenged to stay put and safe in our comforts when it comes to issues around stability security finances relationships, especially platonic ones, communications, and wanting to move towards something that's real. And with the retrograde energy, there's a lot of inward reflecting happening right now where we may not make any fast decisions or moves, particularly with the Taurus energy, but there's more of a rabbit hole thinking and reflecting and feeling how everything is feeling for us and what's happening. I do feel like there's a positive congruence here because the Pluto retrograde dynamic supports the Taurian style right now where we can just sit with what's coming up and not feel like we have to do anything about it. I know Mercury wants to change things. It's, it's a changeable planet and sign in general. But the action may not come yet until Pluto stations direct in the fall in October. On May 18, Venus conjuncts Uranus. Both of these planets are in Taurus. So Another theme around relationships, love, beauty, it could be about self, pleasures, enjoyment, values as well in Taurus. We're breaking free from any restrictive or any false relationships, especially around love, romance, and friendships. So again, another theme where we may, we may be asking, does this relationship or does this way of loving or relating or the way that I take care of myself and nurture myself and love myself, beautify myself and my surroundings, is this true for me right now? Or do I need to let this go? With the Uranian energy, I feel like there's a, a revamp. You're wanting to inject something new and different. Shake things up. And I'll say this can help with relationships. Because if you're in a relationship, especially something long-term, maybe a marriage, but you don't have to be married to be in something long-term, you may realize, okay, this is kind of getting a little bit stagnant. We got to shake things up. And a lot of times that can really help the relationship 
strengthen. Maybe you decide to take an impromptu trip or do something spontaneous. Completely change up the routine. And how those people in that relationship navigate this can say a lot as to the longevity and growth and also the strengthening of that structure. Likewise, if you do that with other relationships and you realize it's not working, it's falling apart, or it, it just fell apart because something new came in, you may realize that the foundation was never strong to begin with. And that's what Venus and Taurus is also speaking to. Some relationships I feel are going to end, or you may simply say, I think I'm done learning everything I can here. And there may be a generally organic walking away or an ease of separating or distance or you, depending on the relationship, or even if it's just with self, say this has to end, this isn't working out. Because sometimes when you try to change, because change is good. Imagine if you were in a relationship and you got into a friendship or a romantic relationship at the age of 20. And say you're 40 or 50 or 60 now and it's still the same. <laughs> I'm not saying the underlying values may not be there, but if you haven't done anything, something may break the relationship where you're like, we need to grow in some way. So it's, it's like that right now that's happening with these themes. If there is a lack of growth or stagnation, either the relationship is going to continue growing or it won't. And Uranus, I feel, is like a tester here. So just feel into that energy and what comes up because Sometimes that may mean trying very new things, maybe in the bedroom with your partner, maybe with your friends, and you're like, you know what, I'm tired of going to the same Chinese restaurant. Let's try a new food or let's do an activity that's different. Or let's stay at home, you know? You'll know exactly where things can go and develop and strengthen by how people respond. It's time to embrace what you're feeling, call to renew, to explore that inner sense of rebellion and adventure and do things in a way that it's going to help you essentially go that way, growth, going toward the north, your north star. This is a great time to try new friend groups, to try new activities that allow you to interact and meet new people. With the existing relationships in your life, do new things, go in different environments, push the limits in, in safe ways for you both or in a group, right? Also different uh, excuse me, a great opportunity to explore different modalities around joy, pleasure, sensuality, sex, love, romance, and simply connection. On May 18, Jupiter, we have a Jupiter Kazemi. I was, I was going to say Jupiter forms the Kazemi. <laughs> so this is when uh, the sun and Jupiter are conjunct one another. So another new cycle happening here. And we're having a lot of these right now with many of these planets have you, as you've seen and coming up. So remember the sign represents illumination, clarity, our life force energy, our vitality, could be our, our career, our soul essence, authority figures, leadership. And Jupiter here is about growth, expansion, abundance, love, desire, spirituality, wisdom, good luck, finances as well. So here we're leaning on hopefully the higher expressions not the lower ones, like arrogance, greed, overindulgence, overconfidence, or ego. So I just want to be clear because this could also lend to these lower behaviors that we don't really want to exhibit. But I feel like this is a good luck charm and I kept seeing the Lucky Charms cereal. So here in the US, we got Lucky Charms. I don't even like the cereal, but I kept seeing it. And I saw the green box, not the red. And I'm like, do they even have a green box? I didn't see the red one. And for me, the green box indicates something more earthly material than the red, even though red too is signifying that, but I got with the green. So it could also be love. So some of you may be coming into feeling more love or love coming your way. It doesn't have to be with people. It could be for what you do. Same thing with any material rewards. Like, think of anything good luck, bonus, financial rewards, resources, help. You got that job or grant or opportunity, whatever it is. And so I feel like wherever you have a Taurus in your house, take a look and any aspects it makes because you'll be able to find out more. But generally, I feel like it's a good luck transit. I feel like the higher expressions, if we tap into that, we can be, and, and we're open too, to receiving 
a lot of beautiful things can come through. On May 19th, the sun in Taurus forms a sextile to Neptune in Pisces. So this is the end of the week, or we end the week with a reminder to keep tapping into your intuition and psychic channels, the messages that you're receiving. Also, any dreams that you're having, take stock of them, write them down. Spiritual reflections, creativity, healing, as you put in that hard work and energy and drive towards your life are all themes that are coming up with this alignment. They are boosters for one another. And I feel like the Piscean energy is feeding into the Taurian energy as we revitalize, as we build, as we create, and as we think about what it is that we want to put our energy towards while we are being receptive to what's coming through for us. It's almost like guidance is coming through meant for us, for our journey. I feel like visual, excuse me, visualizations, guided meditations, or simply describing in words and art and pictures what it is that you would like to see in your life can help make this more tangible. Because when you write your goals down or put them into some type of collage or picture, whatever you want to call, and looking at it, it keeps that momentum alive. It keeps you going forward, generally for not everyone, people have different ways of connecting, but when you're seeing it and you connect to that energy and you feel it, it does something very differently than when you just forget about it. It allows you to tap into that deeper reason or meaning of why am I doing what I'm doing. Coming up, we have the sun going into Gemini on the 20th, so this is the last full week of Taurus. Venus conjoins Jupiter, both in, in Taurus, excuse me. We have the full moon in Sagittarius. Venus enters Gemini and Jupiter enters its detriment in Gemini. So again, a continued party fest happening here. A lot of changes happening. Big opportunities for growth. And you know, everyone thinks all the opportunities that you get are always yes opportunities or yes, let's do it or they're always positive for you. And even if they look good on the outside, like someone offered you a job or an ability to make this money or do this or whatever it is, doesn't mean it's right for you. So that's why there's been a lot of confluence of energy of tapping into, into your intuition and asking, does this feel right for me right now in this season of my life? Would taking on that extra maybe income stream or job? What would it require of me? Does it fit with my values? Does it, just, does it support my home? Maybe where I'm, I am at life. Those are all important things to ask because just remember, just because an opportunity is present doesn't mean it's always the best or right one for you in that season of your life. Okay, let's tap into the tarot and see what other messages. What else do we need to know, please, for this coming week? We got two cards. We got the Ace of Pentacles, uh, Earth energy. We got the Hermit, more Earth, Virgo energy. Look at this. Some of you talk about opportunities here. Some of you may receive, especially with the Pentacle energy, a new job, a new financial opportunity, something big that has the ability to affect. Oh, to affect. I was trying to say that backwards. That has the ability to affect your stability, your foundation, your material world. It could be naturally your finances, your job, your career, how you bring in money, or generally your sense of livelihood. Look at this, something as big is coming in and you may not realize, what do I do? Some of you may be prone to saying yes immediately. And so something here, especially with the Virgo, with the Hermit energy is taking time to say, you know what, hold on. Thank you so much for that opportunity, but I'm going to need some time to think about it. Give me the rest of the week and I'll get back to you on Monday. So just remember, if something big comes up or you're offered something and you're like, you know what? I don't know if this fits with me. This is a time to reassess, especially with the Virgo Hermit card energy and to go within. And this isn't about you collecting every person you know your network, your friends, and saying, okay, I'm going to survey you. What do you think of this? This is actually about tapping into your own intuition. Precisely what I just said before taking the cards. <laughs> We've got the moon here too. Look at this. This is about tapping into your own inner light here. 
So this week, preceding all the Gemini energy that's going to be happening in the next week, a lot of folks feel these energies before. You feel them earlier. And so you may be already sensing something's about to come in or a change is happening. Take some time to think it through and make sure it feels good to where you want to go. This is the main message. This was very short, very straightforward, very earthy for sure. Like no frills, practical. We're just going to tell it to you like it is. We have eight of wands at the bottom. <laughs> we got eight of cups. Be careful of making any in a tower. Be careful of any of making any hasty decisions. And of just looking at what you see on the outside because it may look good, but not really taking the time to sit with it and reflect and see how does this have a larger impact on my life, on the people that I share it with, especially if you have other people in your home, your career trajectory, your life path in general, your goals, and even your values. That's huge. Sometimes we get opportunities presented to us, but it may mean working longer hours. And if your values, maybe one of them is to be more intentional or mindful with living and to honor family, you may say, no, this is an amazing opportunity, but it's not the right one for me. So just something to keep in mind, because a lot of things are going to start coming, especially as we transition towards Gemini season, where you may be feeling so excited and you're like, yes, I want to start a second new job or I want to start on this new platform or this new thing or see whatever it is. Take some time out and reflect more than anything. We're going to grab a self-love oracle. See what other messages we have. Oh, we got two. We got Three, know you are worthy. Abundance <laughs> is everywhere around you. Feel worthy and open yourself up to receive the many gifts that await you. This could also be another signification of potentially thwarting or denying an opportunity because you may not be feeling worthy. But I also feel like this also taps into opportunities you feel like I have to say yes because otherwise it's a missed opportunity and what if it doesn't come back? Let me put the message up here. We've got a dragon. So some of you may connect to dragons. I feel like this is about standing in your power. And we have another moon here, you see? Sometimes you don't know all the, the secrets or the darkness yet, but you can seek them out on your own and get your own clarity here. The moon unveils some of these things we are not that are not uh, made known to us that may be either deep in our subconscious or that we are going to receive in some other way. In other words, intuitive or psychically. The second card we got was 16, which reduces to a seven, evolve. You are allowed to grow, to change your mind, attitudes and beliefs, to become stronger, lighter and happier, and your growth is cause for celebration. This is green, kind of like the Lucky Charms I mentioned. Of course, with red butterflies. So this is a huge focus, perhaps on your finances, your resources. It could be self-care too with Mother Earth. Also, general stability, survival, finances, abundance, and the like. Love as well. Evolve. I feel like one of the messages coming through in this week, in this week's message, or reading I should say, as we wrap this up, is... Sometimes you don't have to do everything. And sometimes everything that comes to you, even if it's something you wanted to do in the past or that is exciting, is not the right time for you. A lot of times there's a culture of saying yes, of doing it, of trying to do everything for everyone but yourself. And I feel like there's a lot of guidance towards, well, what about you? It's really time to reflect and ask yourself, is this right for me? Everyone may be saying, yes, go do it, go after it. But you're like, it's not feeling right for me. And we even have the evil eye here. <laughs> so this is going to be something only you can discern. Some of you may be called to connect to your spirit animals. We've got an owl here which speaks to wisdom. 
we have butterflies and a dragon or maybe it's a gargoyle to me it looks like a dragon dragon and then butterflies you all i hope this reading has helped i'd love to hear your thoughts what you've been going through comment down below i just want to say thank you all for being here i'm really grateful for this community as i grow Taurus style. <laughs> I keep seeing the little snail. I just want to thank you all for being here. I'm just grateful. Thank you for all your comments. Thank you for your likes and support and your engagement. It keeps me going because when I tap into why I do what I do, because I don't get paid for any of this. It's not monetized. I remember I love the creative focus. I love learning. I love teaching. I love sharing knowledge. I love connecting and engaging. And that's why I do what I do. And I remind myself each time where I'm like, I don't want to deal with this tech issue, but that keeps me going a lot. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I'm wishing you a beautiful week ahead. I'll see you soon.